Hello and welcome to another Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. I am back from holiday. Um, have you missed me? Probably not. Um, but that's okay because I haven't missed you either. Um, it's been a good break. Uh, went to Miami. That was fun. We got one of them... Um, them... Fridge magnets. So today we're going to be looking at sending to DVD. So... We've got our project, we're pretty happy with it, because we're always happy with things we've made. Or you may hate your project, um, whatever position you're in, and you want to put it on DVD. Now, to be frank, um, actually to be Dan, to be Dan Allen, the DVD exportation in Final Cut Pro 10 is, you, you can't even compare it to DVD Studio Pro. I mean, DVD Studio Pro is an DVD authoring program that is brilliant and if you can get your hands on it, it is in my opinion well it is my favorite DVD authoring program of all time that I have ever used so if you can get your hands on it maybe go on eBay and buy the old Final Cut Studio get it and check out my tutorials for DVD Studio Pro link in the description along with links to my behind the scenes for Husky um, which is this film that I've actually got a bit of a timeline going on for as you can see in this project so what we want to do is go into share and just choose DVD. And we've got a few options when it loads up. Uh, my computer doesn't like me today, which which is fine because I don't like it either when it when it does this. So I guess we're kind of even. Um, there we go. And you can see that we've got three tabs and some drop down options. It's pretty much all drop down options with Final Cut Pro 10. Why? No. Because Apple think they're easier. I don't know. And you can see based on here that it's it's very bland. It's very dull. Um, what can you do to spruce it up? The answer is not much, unfortunately. You, you really can't do that much. Um, you can add a background. So if we go to add background and we go into pictures. Oh, we're already in pictures. Uh, let's just have a look here. What have we got? Um, I like the picture of me. I've always wanted that as a DVD background. It's really pixelated because it's really small quality. And then we can uh, have a look at some of these. You can see there's a couple of disc templates, black or white. Um, that's really in-depth. I'm going to go for white. And you can see that's just going to adjust the borders. You can see that the background image is taking up this kind of center area, whilst the black or white is taken up above or below. And then when the disc loads you can choose to either show the menu or play the movie so do you want it to come up with this menu and press play or do you want it to just as soon as you put the disc in it plays the film I definitely want it to show the menu so I'm going to choose that layers well automatic is fine but if you know you're using single or dual layer DVDs then you can go ahead and choose it but I'd keep it to automatic um, so it doesn't save your preference and then the output device you can see that we can actually export it to hard drive or to one of my two DVD burners that I've got plugged into my Mac. Actually, the Mac Sheeta DVDR, um, the one that comes in your Mac, uh, or the one I've got plugged in, or a hard drive. So why would you want to do it to a hard drive? Well, let's say you don't have any DVDs on you. You can save it to a hard drive. It's going to save it as DVD files that you can then open up in a DVD authoring program like DVD Studio Pro or Adobe Encore and then burn it with that. Really cool. Advanced, you can obviously send it to compressor or get it to background render. So you could be rendering the DVD in the background. You may be asking, why is it rendering? Because it's only, I just want to put it on a DVD. And that's because it's actually got to change the file type. So you know how um, if you check out my exportation or sending to compressor tutorials, um, links again will be in the description below, uh, there are benefits of um, using compressor, but it needs to compile it into a different movie type, so that is why it has to render, and you can obviously send it to compressor like I said. And then the summary just gives you an overview of the technical settings. That may or may not mean much to you. You can see that the audio channels are set to left and right because I am working in a stereo project you can see over in this corner here that we've only got left and right audio channels so that's why it's um, just going to be stereo and you can see that the name we actually had a choice here Husky short film and 
that's going to give us the AC3 is basically uh, Dolby's audio output, and then we're going to get an MTV file, which will be the video type. And they are two DVD compatible files that it will be compiling to. That's what I'm talking about. It has to export into them file types, and that is what gets burnt onto DVD. If we have a look at the project, you can see we can quickly skim through our whole project in thumbnail view, as it were, um, and just get a preview of how it's going to look on the screen. Why would you want this? Well, let's say we weren't working in widescreen, or you can see I've actually got some letterboxing going on. And again, if you don't know what letterboxing is, watch my tutorial, um, YouTube search it. YouTube search Dan on a Bouncy Castle and letterboxing, and you'll find it. And you can see how it will display in a widescreen TV which is nice. And then you just plug your DVD in, make sure you've got the right drive selected, and just press burn. And that's actually pretty simple. But the other thing you can do is add DVD chapter markers. So let's say we've got um, the taxi driver Please, thanks, love. looking in the mirror, and it cuts to black. I might be like, I want a new chapter marker here. We can... Uh, if it allows me to right click, which apparently won't let me. Okay, mark, markers, and marker. We can select this marker. And then we're starting to get a few more markers in there. We can change some of these, change their names, maybe like chapter one, chapter two. Then when we press share DVD, you can see that we've actually got left and right arrow buttons, but bear in mind we have just lost what we've just done because we've exited the export menu. And you can um, skip through chapters when it's exported. So that is it. That's um, what you do. That's how you send through DVDs. But I advise you to check my DVD Studio Pro training series simply so that you can see how much more control you get with a DVD authoring application as opposed to just exporting to DVD through Final Cut Pro 10. So again, I hope this was useful and I'll be back soon with some more tutorials next week. See you guys soon. And remember to subscribe and request tutorials and all that jazz.